So welcome to the Vortex Garage. You know, in one of our prior videos, we noted that we were working on several features to include some tool tech videos. Today, we wanted to do a quick tool tech on a common item we've pretty much all used in the garage, the hand ratchet. Now we've got an assortment of hand ratchets here, and of course there's different manufacturers, sizes, and types, but they pretty much all function the same. What hand ratchets allow us to do is very quickly remove a nut or bolt by turning in one direction and then free spinning in the other. Of course, they have a switch on top that allows us to change that direction. But have you ever wondered exactly how these function? Well today, we're going to go ahead and take apart one of these ratchets, show you a little bit about how the ratchet head is put together, how the mechanism works, how the switch works, and of course, what that clicking is. Okay, so to show you how the ratcheting mechanism works, we're going to go ahead and take apart this 3 8 inch ratchet here. Now no worries, this isn't a quality tool. This is a no-name brand ratchet that doesn't even work right. So I certainly don't mind stripping it down to use it as an example to show you how a ratcheting mechanism works. Let's go ahead and take it apart. So to disassemble this ratchet, we can take a quick look at it and see that we have three torque screws that need to come out. And we're going to want to go ahead as we take those out and hold this plate which may be under spring tension, as well as this piece back here. Let's start by removing the two in the back. Next, we'll hold everything together, flip it over, and remove this torque screw. All right, now with that done, should be able to go ahead and separate this. Remove the plate. And then actually see our ratcheting mechanism inside. Now I'm not going to fully disassemble this, mainly because I want to keep our switch in here. Go ahead and remove that washer. And I want to keep these mechanisms in here so we can zoom in and show you how that ratcheting mechanism works. It's actually quite simple. So with our cover removed and zoomed in for a better view, we can now get a better idea of how our ratcheting mechanism functions. Let's take a look at some of the parts. First, we'll see there are two pawls, one marked with an R and one with an L. A pawl is essentially a piece that interfaces with a gear and allows it to slip in one direction and catch in the other. In this case, the pawls each have machined ridges on one end that interface with a machined edge that goes around the circumference of the centerpiece, also known as the anvil. On the other end of each pawl, there's a pivot point that rests in a machine area in the main body. We next see springs that rest against the main body and then on the pawl themselves. These springs give tension against these pivot points. In the center, there's a cam attached to the main switch in the back, and that allows us to change the direction of the ratchet. This main centerpiece is also called the anvil. Again, it has ridges machined all the way around its circumference, and they mesh with the uh, pawls. Now that we've seen the parts, we can better understand how the mechanism functions. In this particular case, the ratcheting mechanism is dictated by the position of the paws, which are governed by the position of the center cam. In this particular case, the position of the cam is allowing the left-hand paw to mesh with the center anvil. However, the right-hand paw is pushed off to the side. As we can see, the paws have the pivot point and springs, which allow them to have movement. With the left-hand paw resting against the main anvil, what will essentially happen is, as the mechanism turns to the left, it will catch, therefore allowing us to turn another bolt. If we go the opposite direction, in this case to the right, it will cause the pawl to slip. It will bounce against these, thus causing the click. We can go ahead and demonstrate that now. First, we'll try to turn it to the left. 
As you can see, it rests against the pole. Turning to the right, however, the mechanism slips, giving us the clicking sound. Now we can go ahead and move the switch on the back, thus changing the position of the cam, and as we'll see, the pawls will shift. The right will then interface with the anvil, and the left will be off to the side. Now everything's loose in there, so don't, ex don't be surprised if the pawls kind of move out of those pivot points, but we'll try to keep everything together. Go ahead and keep an eye on that cam movement as we move the switch. As you can see, by moving the switch, we've changed the orientation of the paws. Now the right-hand paw is interfacing with the anvil, and the left is off to the side. So, if we turn our anvil to the right, it'll catch. To the left, it'll slip. So turning to the right, and then to the left. So as you can see, the simple change of the position of this cam altering the orientation of these paws is all it takes to change the direction of the ratchet. Now that we've seen the basic way that the ratcheting mechanism works, we'll go ahead and take it apart the rest of the way so we can check out the individual components. We'll go ahead and be careful not to put, let the uh, paws pop out. We'll remove the back switch and we can better see the cam. As you can see, by changing the position of the switch, that moves the cam, which changes the orientation of the paws. Next, we'll go ahead and remove the center anvil. Taking a look at the anvil, we can see the gear teeth that are cut into it that run along the circumference. Ratchets vary in the number of gear teeth that they have. The more gear teeth, the finer the ratcheting motion the less, the more coarse. We'll show a demonstration of this in a little bit. Next, we'll go ahead and remove the springs carefully so as not to lose them. And finally, we'll go ahead and take out the paws themselves. Here you can see the teeth that are cut into the end of the paw. Looking in the main body, we can see all the machining marks as well as the areas in the back in which the pivot areas are cut for the paws. And that's essentially it. Those are pretty much the parts that make up the ratcheting mechanism in a standard hand ratchet. So to give you a quick demonstration of the benefits of having a finer tooth gear set in your ratchet, well we've got our 84 tooth half inch drive gear wrench here and then of course we're going to use this uh, torque wrench again for demo purposes because it's got a lot. Uh, lower amount of gear teeth in it. I've gone ahead and put a three quarter inch drive socket on there and then we're going to have this bolt here. I'm just going to hand hold it. And we're going to go ahead and assume that this is in a very tight spot on a vehicle and you've got barely an inch of travel on your ratchet before you hit, you know, something. So we can go ahead and get started on this. Say we're trying to go ahead and tighten it. You can go ahead and tighten it that inch, but there's not enough gear teeth to get you another ratchet move on it. So basically, it's just gonna free spin here, you're not actually gonna move the bolt. So you've got a little bit more clearance. It can take up to that much. I'll move it a little more so this camera can see it, but that much movement just to get one click. So in order to actually make movement tightening this bolt, we have to move the back about three, almost four inches. Let's do the same, but let's move to the gear wrench, which has a finer gear set in it. Install our, our, our socket there. Go ahead and get our bolt ready. Let's assume again we've got that same one inch space to work with. As you can hear, we're now making at least two, sometimes three movements, allowing us to go ahead and tighten our bolt even in this short space. 
Assuming we had the full three to four inches of our other ratchet where we were only getting one click, we'd actually have a lot finer movement. The end result being, for every turn in a limited move situation, we're getting more spins on that nut or bolt that we're tightening. This is gonna go a lot faster and save a lot of headaches. And everyone can tell you, you've definitely been in that situation with a cheap ratchet that has very coarse teeth on that gear where you just can't get any spin and you're not making any headway tightening that bolt. So that's a very, very important reason why getting a good quality tool with some fine teeth on this gear set can be very important. All right, so the question may be then, what is the right ratchet for you to have? Well, there's really no easy answer there. And part of the answer is, you're gonna want several different ones. For instance, you're gonna want a half inch drive, a three eighths drive, and a quarter inch drive because these all serve different functions. Next, there's different styles. You may want the ones with the removable handles. They can allow you to get into some tight areas. Of course, there's the classic fixed standard length design. And then of course, the stubby version that gets you into some other tight areas. So as you can see, there's a whole lot of different ratchets out there and they all serve a slightly different purpose. In the end, they're all very useful and helpful in quickly removing or installing nuts and bolts. And hopefully after today and disassembling this ratchet, you've been able to better understand how they're put together and how they function. I hope you enjoyed this video. And again, tool tech videos are something we plan to feature here. We've got some great things coming, a little bit more in-depth stuff. So if you like this, stay tuned. We've got some great stuff coming.